Yeah, we got that. I'd like to uh, call the Planning Commission uh, of Ascension Parish to order for the March 12, 2014 meeting. Um, would the Secretary uh, let it uh, reflect that all members are present except Mr. Donald Sanjay and we have one uh, empty position on the Commission now. Will you please join me in saying Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to note that Mr. Paul Nizo <laughs> has resigned from the board so that he may uh, serve Ascension Paris in another capacity. We thank Mr. Nizo for his service with us and, his, and wish him success in all his future endeavors. And I'd also like to note that since the, um, the meeting that was going to be directly after this, the Joint Planning and Zoning Commission meeting uh, was not um, advertised correctly, that that meeting will not take place. We'll just have the Planning Commission meeting. All right. Uh, <clears throat> do I have a... Have, has everyone read the minutes of the previous meeting? <clears throat> and do I have a motion to... Um, Move for approval. Move for approval. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. All right. The next item is a <coughs> consent agenda. It, the first item is A, Affidavit of Mortgage Declaration of Wilford J. Anglod, Sr. Track day. So, staff comment. We don't have any comments. This is just giving the banks that are holding mortgage on these properties the last chance to come forward and say whether they approve or disapprove of the applicant dividing their property. And so there's no objection? No. Okay. So uh, the next item on the consent agenda is uh, the affidavit of mortgage declaration for Stanley, Stanley Bro property. Any comment? No. Same thing. So do I have a motion to approve all the items on the consent agenda? Move to approve. No second. All opposed? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? All right. The next thing <coughs> is public hearing to approve or deny the following family partition. A. Edwin U. Watts, Jr. Property. Mr. Quitmall. Good evening. Clint Quitmall, representing W.J. Quitmall Surveyors. Ask for planning commission approval on the Edwin U. Watts family partition of lot 1C into lot 1C1 and 1C2. Any comment from the staff? No, sir. I have a motion? Okay. I'd like to open a public hearing for the discussion of this item. Is there anybody that would like to uh, comment? No, no, no sign. All right. Well, I'd like to close the public hearing. Do I have a motion? Yeah, I'll, I'll move uh, for approval. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? All right, the second uh, public uh, uh, item for family partition is Eddie E. Webb and Carol E. Webb property. Mr. Clitmore? Yeah, this is a additional family partition. Um, again, one lot into two uh, due to co-ownership. And so this family partition is the methodology for which you use for that. Staff comment? No comment. Oh. I'd like to open a public hearing for discussion. Would anybody like to make a comment on, in the audience? No one. Okay, I'd like to close the public hearing. I'd like a motion from the... So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Thank you. All right. The next item is the ordinance for public hearing to recommend approval or denial to the Parish Council amendments to the Simpson Parish Unified Land Development Code. <coughs> ordinance um, DR 14-01, revisions to the, ordinance, uh, to the drainage uh, regulations in the Unified Land Development Code pertaining to erosion and sediment control. Stan? Uh, yeah, this was uh, introduced to you uh, last month. It's just re uh, requiring the the uh, reports that are required by the LPDES permits to be submitted to Ascension Parish. 
And then, uh, so it's basically the same as uh, last month, except I did make a small revision. I noticed that the uh, wording of the of the previous uh, ordinance did not mention that it is the required for sites that disturb over an acre and not just uh, a site that's of a that's over an acre. Uh, and so that's the only difference from last month. Any discussion here among um, commission? I guess I'm, I'm kind of looking for uh, Tim. I guess just is is this something that we haven't required in the past that they submit <coughs> their SWIP? Yeah, we we require them to submit the SWIPs, but, but there is no requirement report. for them to submit the reports, the weekly reports they have to do. And it's just uh, the, the LPDS permit requires them to do the reports, but they don't require them to be submitted anywhere. And we're just wanting this for record of a property that was developed to make sure that it. Uh, yeah, yeah. <coughs> just, uh, basically, to, uh, so we can spot check that uh, the, the reports and inspections are being performed. Okay. In this window of time that we're reviewing, I'm going to assume there's a window of time to reply back as if there's something you're going to reject. That, that correct? Um, sorry, you're I requesting don't... the reports. Yes. Before they were responsible for completing a report, not providing the report to us. Now they're going to provide a report. My question is, is there a window of time that you have the opportunity to review it, and if there's something you don't like about it, uh, that's that's spelled out in in the LPDS that's, permit. Yes. They, they have to, if we make a comment on it, they have to address it within seven days. Seven we don't. Days. We're not saying that we have to make a comment on it, but if we do, they have to address it. Yes. Any other discussion here? I'd like to open a public uh, hearing for comment on this item. Does anyone like, would like to make a comment? I have um, Billy Aguilar. Mr. Aguilar. Thank you, gentlemen, uh, members of the planning commission. Um, this is really just a redundancy in paperwork. What what DEQ actually requires is a SWEP plan for if you disturb anything over an acre, and it requires the NOI for be sent into the state for DEQ state DEQ for anything over five acres. If it's under an acre, the the SWEP plan is on file at if if I'm doing a SWEP plan, it's on file in my office. Uh, the landowner the general contractor or an individual person that they hire to do the SWEP plan for them and to do the inspection for them. And you can do the inspections in, in a number of different ways, and it's, and it's spelled out in your SWEP plan how you're going to do them. You can either do them once a month. If you do them once a month, you have to do an inspection every time it rains. But most people in South Louisiana, what they do is you can do an inspection once a week, regardless of how many times it rains during that week. And DEQ doesn't even want to copy the inspection report. You have to have them on file, either with the SWEP plan on site and or it can be within at my office or whoever's office, whoever's doing it within 45 minutes of that site. If you have it at your office, you have to have a notice on site that says who is the responsible party with their phone number. So if the parish comes out and looks at it and there's mud all over the streets or whatever, all they have to do is go to that permit look at that responsible party and call them and say, why haven't you cleaned the streets and where's your inspection report for this week or this rain period? And we want to look at it. You need to be here in the next 45 minutes. Then they got to comply. If they don't, they're in violation of state law. And if we send these reports in, I mean, half the time, and, and Kim, I'm not, I'm not saying you do anything wrong, don't get me wrong, but half the time we send in inspection reports from the testing lab on the site and they get lost. <clears throat> and we'll send them in two or three times and they lost. And, and the easiest thing to do is to have these things on file in our office. If they got a problem, all they got to do is make a phone call to a person. And, and this is already required by state law, by DEQ, and it's already a requirement. And, and this is just a redundancy, and we would we'll be sending in extra pieces of paper for nothing. Anyway. That's my comments. If y'all have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer. Well, it's not a redundancy of reporting. You, you're doing the report anyway. We don't report anyway, but it doesn't so, have to be. It does, it's not even sent to DEQ. It's, it, and sometimes we're not doing it. We hire a subcontractor to do it for them, and they right. keep them at their offices. Maybe Tim could remind us and remind everyone why we thought we needed to have a copy of the report, Tim. 
They are required uh, by the LPDS permits. We're not asking them to do anything else. Uh, we're just asking them to be submitted to us. We're not asking you not to keep copies of it for yourself. No, no, we keep the copies. Uh, we have to state law. And, I mean, if they do get lost, you, you have a copy of it. I mean, I don't see what the issue really would be. It's just having to send you all the extra piece of paper and having to... to it's just the, the process of having to do it and send it to y'all, and it, it, it's just an extra process that, that and, and, and Tim, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that, that, that y'all lose them, but th these things get lost all the time, and they'll call us 15 times and ask us to send them another copy of the report, which takes time, our time and effort to go send them another copy of the report. Why, why can't, can't we require an electronic copy as opposed to a paper copy? Then nothing gets lost, ever. Yeah. Uh, actually, that, that was my idea. Um, we could add that into the ordinance to say that electronic why, copy why, will be what? Uh, why burden ourselves with paper? Let's just do it electronic. It gets filed. That doesn't take any time. And as long as you copy him and, he, and you it, copy it, yourself. It's, it's, as long as, as, as I'll proof that you know, we print out a copy of our emails, as long as that shows proof that we sent it to them so we don't get a complaint that we didn't send it to them. Yeah, I mean, if you copy, you just BCC really got no yourself and you've got a time stamp, you've got everything. Right. Could we change the the deal to be an electronic copy? Okay. Yeah, sure. Uh, that's okay. uh, Yeah, I guess how do, I, how do we do that, Ricky? Just... I think that if the commission just makes that as part of their motion to amend the ordinance to read electronic submission is acceptable. I mean... Do we want to limit it to only electronic or, I mean, I think that stating electronic is acceptable or you can send paper copies, which okay. who's uh, doing that anyway? I think I just to have a report, correct? Yes, sir. By mandating one or the other, you want to report file. Electronic is the most expedient medium. We all understand it. And obviously you have your proof that it was done. I don't know if it's going to be important to say electronic or hand copy or whatever. You want the report. Okay. I like the idea. Electronic is... Mm -hmm. Permissible. <coughs> is this Tim? Is this a reaction to something that might have happened on another site somewhere where we uh, you know, wasn't keeping track? Well, not so much as that we go out and there there are issues. They say that you know they've been doing the inspection reports and they we've requested them. We have an issue about getting them, and then when we finally get them, they may not be accurate. So that's a way of keeping up with it as the project goes uh, on. Yeah, and, and it's it's we'll we'll just be spot checking them. We won't <coughs> obviously we aren't going to be able to look at every report that comes in. Mm -hmm. uh, but if we do see uh, problems uh, that keep occurring, then we'll look at the report and make sure the inspections are being done. Okay. It, it, can I, can I, y'all mind if I answer that? And, and, and Tim, it, the problem with that is, too, is if they're doing it on a weekly basis, you don't have to do it at every rain event. Okay? You only have to do it once a week, and, and that's in the state law. Okay? Mm -hmm. So if it rains on Monday and they don't do the inspection until Saturday, you might have a Monday or Wednesday rain, and you might have a settlement on the street. Well, they're not going to have that report to say that they cleaned it up, or the corrective action is to clean it up until following Monday. Uh, so, yeah, yes, we understand that. You understand that? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, it'll be taken into account. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Ackerman. Just to clarify as well, part of the parish's MS4 permit for stormwater monitoring is that we prepare a year-end summary, and I think part of the, the thought behind collecting these is that now those can become part of our report showing we are actively engaged in the community, in the development process by reviewing these stormwater uh, inspection reports and saying yes they are compliant or no they're not and here's the corrective actions that were taken. It's all part of our MS4 permitting process I think to clean it up because you know, we're not getting any of that today. I think it has a great deal of value. Of course these documents can be stored for long periods of time. Downloaded to a junk drive, a CD, whatever the case may be. But in an ideal world by being stored electronically if you had to do some research, control F, type whatever you're looking for, bam, it will bring it directly to it. That certainly expedites turning pages in a telephone book size document. So I, I think that's a great deal of value. Um, is there any other comment on the commission? Do I have a motion? 
Well, we need to close the public hearing. Oh, okay. I'd like to close the public hearing. And, and is there anyone else who would like to make a comment? Okay. Public hearing is closed. I'll, I'll uh, move that. We recommend approval of this ordinance to the Parish Council with the change in paragraph D that says on the fourth line report shall be submitted electronically to the Ascension Parish from our department. I think we said, or Rick recommended it, the report to be sent and electronic is permissible. Yeah. He's not limiting it to I think the discussion we had is not the limited to just one meeting or the other. Okay. Then, then we'll report. say, then I'll amend that, that motion to say that the reports may be submitted electronically. Yeah. But the report shall be submitted. Yes. A second. Right. Second. I'll second that. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Ory mm -hmm. seconds. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, motion passed. Okay. Is there a staff report? No, sir. Is there engineering? Uh, the staff engineering report? Uh, report by last month, you asked me to give a, an outline of our uh, drainage impact study uh, that we're doing, and uh, John is going to call up that uh, PowerPoint presentation. Uh, I'm just going to give a, a brief uh, presentation. If you have any questions uh, for me, please speak closer to the mic. Yep. Thanks. Okay. Uh, so this is the Ascension Parish Drainage Impact Study, and all the developments in the parish are required to do these studies. If you remember, uh, a couple months ago we were uh, talking about uh, the exception and for for smaller sites and that if it was, you know, an impervious area or a uh, pervious area, but that exception has been eliminated. So any development within the parish, regardless of the size, is going to have to do one of these uh, drainage impact studies. And all the calculations in the drainage impact study have to be done under the direction of a licensed civil engineer. Uh, <coughs> Uh, so I gave you all the drainage impact study, and the policy is located at, on the Ascension Parish uh, website, www.ascensionparish.net. It's under departments, and then you go to the planning and zoning department, and then the planning department, and then there the impact study is uh, listed under there. And then the first three items are uh, generally giving you the uh, location of the site, what the existing uses of the site are, and the existing soils of the property, and then uh, it, the, the site is located on a FEMA flood map. Uh, and then we develop a watershed map uh, based on this. Uh, what is shown, the black dashed outline, is the uh, is the watershed and what is what water is going to be con and runoff is going to be contributing to the site, which in this uh, map is down on the left hand corner. And then we set up a pre-developed model of the site. And this can be done in several different ways. We don't specify the type of uh, of model that has to be set up. Uh, uh, or the procedure that needs to be used. Uh, it can be done in, in a computer model or it can be done by hand also. In this case, there are four, the, the watershed is divided into four different areas. It's going down to a, it all discharges eventually, they all come together and they discharge into a roadway ditch, which is uh, 5L down the bottom, the bottom left of the page. And these models can get rather complicated. This is just a, another uh, model. Uh, it has a couple different watersheds. And it's also there is an existing pond on the site which would attenuate the runoff. So there's less runoff. And that's important because we cannot increase the runoff in the site. 
So therefore, with the pond, with the existing pond on there, there's going to be less less runoff. And when I say less runoff, there's I'm talking about the the rate of runoff. There is, is going to be an increase in volume, but the rate is what we're really looking at. Tim, can I uh, interrupt you and ask a question for a minute? Yep. Um, now we're calling this the Ascension. Um, such a parish drainage impact study. Is this conducted by the developer or by the parish? Uh, yes, I'd be conducted by the developer. By the developer, they, by a licensed engineer. Yes, by a licensed engineer. Then they'd submit it to us, and then we'd review it and take a look at it. So, yeah. so far, have we, have we talked about everything the developer has done so far, including the modeling, the watershed map, and everything else? Or is that something you're looking or you're producing? Well, uh, the developer would produce it, and I'd look at it and get an idea on, you know, and whether I agree with uh, what they're saying or not. Just out of curiosity, when you know, watershed maps uh, here in, in such a flat area can be really tricky to mm -hmm. figure out. So you have to do a lot of field reconnaissance for that. And, uh, do you guys actually go out and take a look, make sure water is flowing in the direction that it appears on the by contours? Uh, you, we have a map. Uh, the Ascension Parish has uh, a LIDAR map, and just based on, it just shows sh uh, shading that shows where the lower ground, how the ground flows in the in the lower ground. We really depend on the engineer, the developers' engineers, to actually produce these maps. Uh, and then we also we look at you know other maps that they have, and the USGS. Uh, puts out uh, maps also of the United States uh, Geological Society. So the, uh, the developer's engineer will do the watershed map based upon how, whatever method they use to, to do that, either either analyzing the contours or going out and doing fuel reconnaissance and determining what flow comes into that watershed and what, what doesn't. Uh, yes. Yep. Okay. okay, thanks. Okay. Uh, so then, from the information that uh, we developed on that, uh, we have from the watershed map, we develop uh, how much flow is coming into the site, and that's based on the information that we had before uh, on the, the soils in the site, what's the existing use of the site, how much is being absorbed into the soil, uh, and how long it takes for the water to get down to the outlet of the site when a point where all the water are, is contributing. And what we're showing here is a hydrograph. Uh, I know you can't, can't read it at all, uh, but the main important part is the blue line there that shows uh, the water that's based on a, a time, and you can see the water is how it increases over time and then decreases once a peak is reached. Tim, what, what frequency of rainfall event uh, do the developers use? Uh, in Ascension Parish, we require a 10-year uh, storm. They, ten usually, storm they usually look at a 100-year storm also for overflows, uh, <coughs> but that is not required by Ascension Parish. Yeah, and I think, and that's typical of, of communities uh, everywhere yes. that you can't you can't design for hurricane storm events. Uh, you can't design your drainage system for that. So we we design something that's we use something that's reasonable. And a ten year storm is is pretty reasonable. Uh, yes, and that's how most communities uh, design their storm drains for a ten year storm. Some of the detention basins are designed based on the two, five, ten, right. twenty five hundred year storm. Okay. So we need to make that clear that there are going to be storm events that are unprecedented. And Well, maybe I shouldn't say unprecedented. We seem to have had everything here. But <laughs> there are going to be major storm events that the system was not designed to, to retain all the flow within the drainage uh, ditches or within the drainage culverts, and there will be some occasionally overflow. Uh, yes. Yep. What we want to try to, and, and street flooding is one thing, what we want to try to always avoid is, is home flooding, obviously. So. Yep, yep. Okay, thank you. So then 
Uh, this information that we've developed is brought into a pre-developed map, uh, basically a, more of a close-up map of what exactly is going on at the, at the site itself and how much water is leaving the site, uh, which is represented by our, our Q, a flow, 10, 10 year storm. And that's, uh, so in this case, it's 14 CFS cubic feet per second leaving the site. And again, that is a rate of flow that we're concerned with. Uh, so then we look at the what they're planning on developing in the on the site. In this case, there is a detention pond on the top and the the left hand side, and the building and parking is towards the right, at the center and the right of the of the site. And then they'd set up a post developed model. Uh, in this case, we have three areas going into the new uh, detention pond, uh, which discharges into the roadside ditch, 5L, down at the left-hand bottom of the, of the page. And one, one of the watersheds is discharging directly into the, into the roadside ditch. And again, this is a, just a more, more complicated model. Uh, we have a couple of different watersheds that we're concerned with, and this is all draining into, into a pond also. And then they just have a, this is the pond summary. Uh, I know you can't read it, but just um, just to show you what we, we take into account, the, the volume of the pond, and by the outlet structure, that limits the amount of water that can be going off at one time. And then it's calculated out what the peak elevation in the pond is going to be. And so then we just compare the two uh, different models, the pre-developed model against the post-developed model. Uh, and again, in the pre-developed model, we had a, a flow discharge coming off the site at a 10-year storm of 14 CFS cubic feet per second. And it, and then after the site is developed uh, with the pond, it's uh, reduced to 13 CFS. So we say you know, that that is good, um, that they're reducing the flow, the discharge. And so basically the you know, land use, it, it's going to happen. There's going to be potential impacts. And we just got to... Uh, reduce those impacts and make sure that no one is negatively affected. Uh, so if you have any questions, I can uh, answer it. Yeah, uh, uh, last time we met, I, I asked for this presentation because there was a conflict between what the engineer said about where the water went and what the neighbor said actually happens when it rains. And I would assume we're going to have those conflicts over and over. How do we, how do we rectify that, or at least address them? Yes, as I tried to explain in the in the in the meeting last month, and I talked to that resident again uh, the other day, just to you know, clarify that this was only a preliminary study, and it's just so that they can move forward with their their more detailed design. And as the when the construction plans come in, we'll review them more closely. And also, that's not the end of the thing either. Uh, even once those are approved, we work with the, the developer, the engineer, the contractor for any issues that come up uh, during during construction. Uh, and they don't look at it as like, okay, we got approval, we can do what we want. You know, they said it was okay, we're going to do it. That's uh, if it's causing problems and we didn't pick it up, they'll work with us to get it to get it resolved. Uh, the point I, I made earlier about the watershed uh, is important because all the calculations, everything you assume and everything you design for is based upon your the, the, the approval or the or the correctness of the watershed information in the first place. 
So um, it's really important if yeah, I, I, and I, w I wasn't sure how we went about doing these things. If we depend upon the, the licensed engineer to do it, um, that's good um, because his reputation or her reputation <laughs> is, is at stake. But I would hope that we would also um, talk to residents and uh, make sure that uh, there weren't some assumptions that were made in, in the determination of the watershed that are, that are just incorrect. Uh, not suggesting that there are. Um, but like I said, in, 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 land, in flatlands in Louisiana, it's very difficult to figure out watersheds. And in fact, depending on the rainfall event, watersheds can change. And water can flow in, in different directions. So it's a tricky thing. It's, it is complicated. Uh, the modeling is complicated. I have a lot of confidence in it. Don't get me wrong. But I think mm -hmm. that um, at, at the point to, to, uh, to make and the point at, at which uh, the most important decisions are made or when the, when the watershed's determined in the first place. So if we could um, find some way to, I, I'm not sure what we do at that point, Tim. Uh, uh, we get the en engineer's report. We see the watershed they've developed. I, I, if we had the staff and the money and the time to do it, I'd love to, you know, do a little more determination of whether that watershed, you know, just how good that watershed information is. But other than that, I think this was a, a good report, and uh, and I and I'm I have a lot of confidence in in, in modeling and the engineering aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And I think the the frequency of storm event, everything else is is fine. Uh, it's appropriate, and it's what most communities use. It's um, it's not it's conservative enough um, for for this area. And uh, so I'm, I'm thank you for doing it. The report, mm -hmm. uh, I think, is well done. Appreciate it. Okay, good. Um, I have another question. Yeah, okay. I would uh, agree with you. This, I mean, this is all theory, and we have to work with the residents. The residents know what, you know, better, has a better idea and understanding of what is happening out there. Yeah. Does the 24-hour uh, flow, the 8.5-inch storm, does that uh, suppose that where it drains is empty or that it could be full and there's nowhere for the water to go? Uh, well, they would, they look at where it's draining into and they have, they apply a, a tailwater to that if they expect that there is going to be an impact if it's where it's draining to. And also it, it is taken into account the absorption of the soils. So it, there is a certain amount that is assumed that it's going to be absorbed already in in the soils. Uh, so, and so much has already occurred, and so it's determining how much runoff there is going to be. The the whole idea of retention ponds, people, and a lot, it's hard to understand that if you're not in the business, I guess. But a retention pond always has water in it. There's always some water in retention ponds. Yeah. Uh, almost all. It yeah. some well, it also the idea is that there's storage between where the water normally is and when there's a rainfall event, there's a lot of storage in there. That's the idea of the retention pond, to reduce the rate of, of flow to, to, for the pond to store water and to, and to release it more gradually uh, to, so as not to overburden the downstream uh, effect of the, of the rainfall event. So that's how they, they work. But Yep. And also, there are two different types of detention ponds. There's dry ponds and wet ponds. Yeah, wet ponds are designed to always... wet ponds here, though, don't we? Uh, I'd say mostly, but they, they kind of go both ways. Residential retention ponds are mostly <coughs> wet ponds. Uh, yeah, usually. I mean, I've seen a lot of commercial retention ponds that are dry. Yep. yep. Right. Okay, thanks. Any other comments? Um, I just want to uh, mention again that we're not having the joint planning and zoning meeting afterwards because uh, it was advertised incorrectly, and we're just not going to have it this week. We'll have it next month. I mean, so do I have a motion to adjourn? Do we have this? No. That happens off? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We're not having that. Okay. So um, do I have a motion to adjourn? I move for adjourn. Second. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Are you kidding?